Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. I'm itching for a fight. All right, Vigilant Mall. It's time for us to move out. I'm happy that you're with the Order. You've proven yourself. And I think you're ready. Decided to leave Vigilant Cronag... What can I do for you? ...at the Hall of the Vigilant. He'll yes, be tutored sir. by Knight Paladin Cyrus. All right. I read a very chilling tome in a niece basement cabin, in her cabin basement. And we need to go to the Wind Peak Inn I'm itching for a fight. to follow up on this. How can I assist you? All right, this way. I'm so tired. I work for the Wind Peak Inn. Oh. Welcome. Let me know if you want anything. This is a local favorite. Think I got a and clean one of the first songs somewhere. I ever learned. Ragnar All the right. Red. Oh, there once was a hero named Ragnar the Red. Theron. Riding to White Rock I read your name in a book. Head. What are you looking at? And you said exactly that. And I'm supposed to say your name is Theron, I take it. I'm here about the job. Oh, yeah? You're a bit scrawnier than the way Argus described you. But I'll be a Reekling's uncle the day he tells it true. I suppose the snowback didn't bother to tell you what the job's about, either. Don't worry, it ain't a long story. Follow me. And the braggart named Ragnar was boastful no more! When his ugly red head rolled around on the floor! Where's Mule? Alright, well... Suppose I'll catch up with her late. Oh, there you are. Alright, where'd he go? Hmm? All right. <sighs> That's better. Gotta love that fresh winter air. Now, about the job. Yes. I doubt Argus told you this, but I used to be a bandit. Had a crew that numbered two dozen not a month ago. We were making good coin, raiding caravans in the occasional mine, until one of them decides he wants a bigger slice of the pie. My slice. Don't know how we convinced the others, but about six of them made rounds around the camp, cutting throats. All my men, dead as dog meat. Hmm. Wolves outside must have smelled it, too, because they started howling. It was them beasts that gave me enough time to figure out what was going on and slip out the back way. <laughs> Funny part is, I'd been nagging the boys to kill those things for weeks. All right. I'm afraid I have to say this. As a Vigilant of Stendar, I don't help bandits. I kill them. And I want to further add that wherever the Daedra hide, the Vigil of Stendar will cast them into the light. I know. That's why Argus recommended you. Really? You'll be killing a whole clan of them and ah. getting a share of the spoils. Can't let you have all the fun, though. I got a couple more men I need to recruit. You meet us over at Redoran's Retreat. All right. Do you need something? Ah, uh, I'm not sure if your services will be needed. This sounds more personal. Do you need something? But I suppose we can head over to Redoran's. Let's see, what have we got here? Is there anything interesting? Water cave. A stolen heirloom. Those are always interesting. I'll take it. In the meantime, though. Vigilant Maul, let's head to Redoran's retreat. What can I do for you, friend? 
All right, I want you to wait here. How I'll, can I assist you? I'll handle this. Certainly. Be careful. No. Look out! Oh, You're no. as good as oh, Told you to wait, and now you can't. Ah! Like the bite of a flea. Ugh. Oh, but I will have your blood. Good. You're all here. The plan's simple. We go in and kill every... on two legs, except for the chief. I'll have him crawling on all fours. Any questions? Yeah, boss, I got a question. What if I have dogs? Wouldn't they be on four legs instead of two? Would you want us to spare them, seeing as they end by stupid mucks? I'm confused as well. You say, kill everything on two legs, but don't that include us? You idiots! Just kill everything in the cave, except the four of us. Got it? Hmm. Where did you find these people? Alright, Mjol, I can barely see you. Okay, here you are. Alright, I'm sorry about that. I couldn't get you, uh, free to attack the vampires. But wait here, I'll deal with these whoever these people are come on how do I get myself mixed up in this mess really need my help with this. Alright, Stendar, take you. Take you all. Alright, they've been dragged into the light. What now? sure I collect everything. Alright, something. Read volume three of the paper mirror. Where is that? Alright, it must be deeper inside the cave. Theron looked at the assortment of bedrolls, dressers, and barrels scattered across the living quarters. Excuse me. The place was a mess. I know you're all waiting. But not in the way he remembered. The bedrolls were facing the wrong way. The mead had been swapped out for ale, and there was a bandit lair, all right. It was a bandit lair, all right, the same as all the others, but entirely different. Talos Beard, I hardly recognize this place. Is that a sodding book on the table, he said, returning to the things he did recognize? 
weapon racks, purses full of gold, and a few trophies from back when the crew was whole. Every one of these things has a story, he said, beaming like a proud father whose children had just come home. Take this pendant, for example. Got it off a carriage, moving a noble's family to solitude. It was locked in a safe, you see, and try as we might. Nobody could crack it. This noble, he tried to bargain with me, saying he'd open the safe if I spared his blushing bride. So I said, sure, a deal's a deal. Open the safe, and I won't lay a hand on your girl, of course. I never said anything about my men. There was something about the way Theron chortled that bothered Zaquan. It was a bestial laugh, the kind of foul grunt that makes you forget he was once a man. It was the same laugh that haunted the writer's dreams, even now alone at his table in Castle Dower Dungeon. It crawled over his bones, reminding him that horrible night. It was a laugh that shrunk his very soul. Anyway, the funny part is I couldn't pawn it, Theron continued, with the bloody inscription on the back to my darling Cassandra. Why couldn't we have just married a girl named Helga? Why couldn't he have just... Okay, whatever. For Theron, there was a point to this story. It was Argus who told him the pendant couldn't be fenced, and it was Argus who sent him a letter the day before. The cell sword he had promised Theron would not be coming. The Nord had failed to come through once more. The question was, who was the impostor? Who claimed otherwise? Theron approached the stranger, his hand shadowing his sword hilt. Of course I blame Argus, he said. If he was half the fence he claimed to be, he could sell the thing for twice what it was worth. Not that I need to tell you, seeing as you used to work for him. Theron's lips twisted into a rictus, rictus. His blood was still simmering from having killed Javid. And now there was another traitor he needed to deal with. Where did you say you two met anyway? Talos's beard. I hardly recognize the place. Is that a sodding book on the table? No. It this is. is more like it. Every one of these things has a story. What's going Take on here? Take this pendant, for example. Got it off a carriage, moving a noble's family to solitude. I just read this. It was locked in a safe, you see. And try as we might. And now he's saying no everything that's in the book. This noble. He tried to bargain with me, saying he'd open the safe if I spared his blushing bride. So I said, sure. The deal's a deal. Open the safe and I won't lay a hand on your girl. Of course, never said anything about my men. <laughs> so why did I bother reading the book if he's going to anyway, recite everything? The funny part is I couldn't pawn it with the bloody inscription on the back. To my darling Cassandra. I couldn't have just married a girl named Helga. Helga. Of course, I blame Argus. If he was half the fence he claimed to be, he could sell the thing for twice what it was worth. Not that I need to tell you seeing as how you used to work for him. Where did you say you two met, anyway? Wait. What? Who is Argus, anyway? Hm. I didn't say that. No, you didn't. Funny story. On my way to recruit the others, I got a letter from Argus saying his cell sword couldn't take the job. I don't know who sent you, but either way, you can't be trusted. Now you're going to die. Oh, here we go. You with the flames. Enough. And you. 
You two are too stupid to even be involved in this fight. Where did he go? He ran? Hmm. All right, Stendar. Thank you for your protection. Before we go... Oh, it's empty. And he ran. All right. Seriously, Theron? I'm calling upon the flames of Stendar. You have one last chance. And you squandered it. Walk always in the light, or we will drag you to it. So, Paper Mirror Volume 2. Javid was always the clever one, sharper than Skyforge steel. They used to say, and that went double for his smithing work. When Yorlin Greymane fell ill one season, many of the boys joked that Javid ought to take his place. You never want to follow a legend, the Red Guard quipped. You want to follow the poor fool who tries. Theron, by contrast, was a bandit's bandit, his face cut out from the sketch of a wanted poster. He was stronger than the others, meaner, than just about anyone, and would, and would have been chief had the clans not agreed to follow the elf. When the wood elf turned himself in, it was Javid who warned him things would go sour. They relied on the elf for everything, from planning and coordinating the raids to rationing out the spoils. When he was in charge, they operated like a proper guild without him. They were just bandits. Still, becoming chief of the clan was something Theron had wanted for years. If he passed on the opportunity now, he might never get another chance. Besides, Theron suspected the Wood Elf was hardly the genius J Javid made him out to be. After all, he was really so smart. Why did he turn himself in? The grumbling started almost immediately. The Wood Elf always knew the schedules and the numbers of guards and the valuables that they were carrying. Under Theron, the boys would stand outside for days in the rain, and not a single carriage would come by. Theron had also promised the men longer, larger cuts, since the spoils weren't divided with the town folk. Yet, while the cuts were larger, the hall was but a pittance of what it used to be. One carriage was completely empty save for a single book. The night of the coup, Theron had fell asleep trying to read that book. The first time he skipped to the end and the part about the rope. This time, determined to read it cover to cover, he never made it past the first page. Still, the words of the Red Guard echoed in his mind long after he had drifted into Vermina's embrace. Vermina. So that's what's going on here. You never want to follow a legend. You want to follow the poor fool who tries. It was the wolves that, mo that woke him, but it was the words that warned him of the danger. Scrambling to his feet, he could hear his attackers making their way down the tunnel. Without a second thought, Theron rushed behind the cooking pit and tugged on the rope. At the rear of Redoran's retreat, there was a large shaft that stretches and stretches to the surface, presumably dug out to rescue miners in the event of a collapse. Earlier that day, Theron had tied a rope to the base of the tree and dropped the other end down the hole. He never told the others. He wasn't entirely sure why, but it saved his life. It wasn't long before Theron began plotting his revenge. Javid was clever, 
but not much of a fighter. Theron was confident that a handful of men was all that was required to take back the hideout. The problem was finding men he could trust. It was one of his old fences, Argus, who offered to help. Javid had refused to deal with the Nord until he lowered his rate, whereas Theron, never one to argue over numbers, had always left it to the smuggler's discretion. Argus also had a reputation for working fast, something Theron appreciated, given the situation. Regardless, not even Theron expected the stranger to walk into the Wind Peak Inn only days after Argus promised to deliver him. What are you looking at? Theron asked, bending his lips into a scowl. He didn't like the stranger. There was something about him that reminded him of Javid. Maybe that was a sign, but of what he didn't know. Your name's Theron, I take it, the stranger said. I'm here about the job. I am completely and utterly creeped out by this. So Vermina, is this some sort of dream? I don't know what's going on here, what's real? All right, let me get out of here. There might be some trap out here. Mule, you're still here. Thank you. Ah, you're back. Yes. Follow Excellent. me. And where exactly are you following me to? Find volume... four of the paper mirror. Looks like it's back to solitude. This way. Excuse me. Vigilant of Stendar are here on business. I'm telling you, Ulfric's planning an attack on Whiterun. He'd be insane to try. He doesn't have... Here it is. All right. The writer stared at the final page, the ink dripping from the quill. The fire from the hearth crackled behind him. Further down the dungeon, the guard made his nightly rounds his boots rapping against the smooth stone. All around him, time moved, but his hand stood still, unable to place the period at the end of it all. For the first time, the surface of the mirror looked serene. In the past, every sentence would swell into a towering wave, guiding the protagonist forward. Now, even the most violent prose could produce a ripple. The writer should have been relieved Theron was dead, and he died by the writer's hand. The bastard would never again see the light of day, but neither would Cassandra. The writer lay his dagger on the table, the edge brimming with fire. Beside it, the quill lay languidly in the inkwell, promising a storybook in. Would the conclusion come with the stroke of a pen or a slit of the wrist? The writer could only shake his head. He had little trouble fashioning the endings of the other characters, 
but he struggled mightily to write his own. One last time, his band reached forward, oh, his hand reached forward. When his thoughts turned not to Cassandra, but to the protagonist of the story, it was an old writer's habit to think of the beginning when he was so close to the end. Perhaps he thought there was another choice, beyond the one the mirror presented, the same one the writer proposed to Zakwan as the wiser course of action when he entered that dim cellar so many months ago. Perhaps he could simply turn away. So, entering the cellar, Entering a nice cellar is what started this whole thing. Dogs will never break my will. I'm gonna take this dagger. So from that moment on, I was... I'm sorry, I don't even know. Have I been dreaming all this time? Have I been under the influence of Vermina? Oh, my goodness. There's only one thing I can do. Stendar. Help your humble servant. I think I've been swayed by the Daedra once again. The events of the past day have been what a blur you, of dream and reality. I don't know what's real and what isn't. Guide me, Stendar. All right, I hope that helps. All right, Mule. I think we're done here. Everything all right? <laughs> You're interfering with official Thormor business. Well, I wish I could say everything How was can all I help right. You? I don't know. This doesn't concern you, citizen. Maybe a back massage. Come on, let's go.